Thank you for joining me live from the grooming table. I am Amy Lee, certified professional pet groomer since 2003, but it is absolutely my pleasure to share with you the secrets of the pet grooming industry so you can provide quality care for your beloved pets at home. And that's what we do every Monday at 536, 536, every Monday, <laughs> only when my stream key doesn't work. We got it going now, guys. I think we're good. I hope everybody's got the right link. Uh, great topic tonight, guys. I can't wait to jump into this with you. We got some good stuff to share. Uh, it's going to be very educational, uh, really good for you and your pets, and it's kind of picking up on last week. So tonight's topic, pet food lies and labels, and there are lies on those labels. Grooming your dog's health with food. This is part of a playlist that we are going to be finishing up probably next week. So I want to tell you a few things guys before we start diving into this. We're also going to be putting some of the highest rated kibble brands to the salt divider test. What that means is that all ingredients listed on the label of the pet food after salt. So everything listed after salt on the label makes up less than 1% of the food that means there's hardly anything in it after salt, after the ingredient salt. So this is one of the most deceitful tricks played upon us by the pet food industry, in my opinion. So in other words, all ingredients listed after salt make up 1% or less of the food that's in the bag. So we're going to study a few labels today and we're going to be mind blown. You just wait. So stay put as we dissect the labels of four popular food brands, food brands available to our pets on the market today and learn what is really inside a bag of kibble okay because that's what most dogs eat you would be better off to bake a cake for your dog rather than feed them what is considered high quality pet food i'll explain that to you tonight guys this video is part of a series of episodes concerning your pet's health now you know that we've been talking about that last week and this week the unspoken skin and coat issues that brushing, bathing, and grooming your dog can't fix. That's right. When we take our pets to the vet because they are suffering from skin issues, maybe skin infections or other related health problems, often they are prescribed antibiotics and steroids to fix the problem. I want you to understand that what you feed your dog could be causing all of these issues as well as slowly killing your dog at the same time, slowly killing your pet, and it is. And I hate to be so morbid, but I have to bring you guys the truth. Why is it that food is not something our vets are educating us on to set our pets up for a long, healthy existence? We don't get those lectures too often when we go to the vet, guys. Now let's think of it this way. When we go to our doctor for a checkup and, and they do annual blood work, which they do that on our dogs too, you know, we may learn during that checkup and through the results of that blood work that we have high blood sugar, that we have high cholesterol, or even that we've been diagnosed with obesity. These are very common health issues for middle-aged people living in the United States. Along with taking medications to correct these problems, our doctors, they will also talk to us about our diet, our activity level, because those two things are most likely the contributing factors resulting in the high blood sugar and the high cholesterol and in obesity. So why is it that when our dogs are faced with these same health issues, our trusted vets are not educating us on the importance of our pet's diet and what that has on the effect it has on their overall health, guys. Overall health means skin, coat, inside, everything, inside and out. But what's worse than that is that if they do suggest a change in the diet, they recommend prescription dry kibble that has been proven to be the culprit of many health concerns due to the studies that we have all read over the last decade especially. There are many studies confirming that kibble pet foods have been recalled for bacteria far more than raw feeding, yet raw feeding is discouraged by most vets. Why? I don't know. Our trusted vets continue to recommend we feed kibble and discourage raw feeding and cooking for our pets. 
They discourage that. As pet food consumers, that's us, we've armed ourselves with knowledge concerning what is the best diet for our beloved pets at home. We have had to go do the research. We have had to go find the answers. And it's scary and confusing. But we're doing it because we want the best for our pets. And we see these terrible degenerating problems that they're having. The answer is raw feeding and then cooking for your dog because those two options alone contain no synthetic additives, sugars, or fillers, nothing but whole fresh food. That's big difference from everything else, big difference. Kibble is the last thing that our dogs were designed to eat, my friends. Kibble is not moisture dense. It is not well balanced with the right amount of protein, vegetation, and nutrients. But to top all that off, kibble breaks down to contain large amounts of sugar through starches and carbohydrate sources that make up the bulk of all kibble brands on the market today, guys. That's some serious stuff. Pet food is loaded with carbohydrates and starches, which turns to unnecessary sugar in our dog's bodies. It can encourage skin and ear infections, but even worse, diabetes. And that's a bad thing, and it's on the rise. So is obesity in our dogs. It's on the rise, guys. You know that. It's terrible. So here's the question that we all want to know. Why does the pet food industry put this junk in our pet's foods? hoping that we don't read the labels on the back of the food that they so beautifully package with pictures of fresh meat, grains, and vegetables. And most pet food brands do not even contain any of the ingredients pictured on the front of the bag. It's a lie. It's all a lie. Tonight I will show you four different well-known food, pet food brands labels. We're going to read them. We're going to see what the labels tell us, okay? Please, guys, throw your questions in the chat. I want you to be part of this conversation. It's very, very important. Our pets require a nutritionally, biologically appropriate, moisture-rich, balanced diet that is high in protein, low in carbohydrates, fillers, and byproducts. There is no bag of kibble that can provide this to our pets. Not one single bag of kibble can provide the biologically appropriate diet that they think need to thrive upon and that's a big to do kibble requires heavy amounts of starches to bind the food together or it would just crumble into dust in the bag kibble contains high amounts of starches and grains which allows this process of making pet food to be successful without the large amounts of starches and grains you can't make kibble just like baking a cake we need a large amount of sugar and flour to hold it all together as it bakes or it would just fall apart guys just like kibble if we didn't bind those ingredients now i want to talk about a couple of other things that we're going to touch on tonight a couple of other linked problems with kibble pet food is poor gum and tooth health due to sugar overload all right let's think about that the same as if we ate candy every day cavities will happen tooth decay right this is not a problem for raw feeders, and that is because there's no sugar in that diet. Think about it. Now, there's natural sugars, but not sugars from starches and carbohydrates that are making up the bulk of the food. Another problem with kibble definitely has proven to be, and studies show, kibble can cause organ failure. It has caused organ failure, such as the kidneys, the liver, the pancreas, the heart. It has studies have proved that why is this still our number one source of food for our pets what are we doing guys obesity in our dogs which leads to early stages of arthritis cancer and death i i just think that we need to take a look at this you know kibble is loaded with carbohydrates and sugar and starches and that's what we're giving our dogs so guys before i go any further we're going to start looking at some labels I want to say this so that you guys take advantage of this after we're done when you have more time today, tomorrow, the next day. I have linked many videos in the description of this video. Um, Rodney, Rodney Habib, is, is a couple of his videos were just too good not to share with you guys. Okay, um, who makes the best brand of kibble dog food? 
That's an awesome one. These are all linked in the description below, guys. The Rise and Fall of Grain-Free Pet Food by Rodney Habib. That's an excellent video to watch. Mind-blowing stuff, but all true. He, he has done the research. He has put the work in, guys, and, and he knows far more about it than I do. That's why I'm sending you to his YouTube channel to get more information, okay? Because I want you to have the information that you want. The Unknown Sugar in Pet Food, that's linked down there. That's important, guys. Most all kibbles contain at least all 50% sugar is what it breaks down to. That's like pouring 50% of your dog's food in the bowl is sugar. No wonder these, you know, the tooth problems, we're having to get their teeth cleaned all the time. Well, we're rotting them out of their, their mouth. That's what we're doing. Think about it. Why do, do whole foods, you know, raw diets and cooking for our dogs, why don't those, those diets, the dogs that are eating those foods, why aren't they having these tooth decay problems? Why aren't they obese? Why aren't they developing early heart disease and, and, and heart failure and kidney failure? Because we're not killing them from the inside out. So I do want you guys to make sure you take advantage of, of watching these videos when you get time. If you can't sleep at night, pull one up. I mean, it's just important, important for you guys to, to do this, okay? Um, I can see the chat, guys. Yeah, I know. Things get really messed up. I can see the chat. Um, I am going to be able to get to questions. Does anyone have a way to reach her? No, I think I'm good here, guys. I can see you. It's just different. Um, is my chat up? Can you see the chat on the screen? Yeah, see, that's a different chat. Hold on, guys. I know what the problem is. I know exactly what it is. My stream key got messed up. I got you. I, I have got to spend some time this week getting this situated. My OBS and YouTube, things have changed in YouTube, and it's just really wrecking my live streams because I just, I, I, I don't know why these problems are happening. Okay, I'm going to fix our chat right now, okay? This should work. There it is. All right. Yep. Where's my footer? See, everything got messed up. Hang on, guys. I'll get you. Yeah, everything got kind of goofy. All right, but we're back. We're together. I'm sorry about that. There you go. Okay. Hi, guys. We fixed it. I'm sorry. Please, guys, if you have questions, don't hesitate to throw in a line in front of your question so I can get to it. Right now, I want to pull up our first label so we can take a look at it. I also need a drink of water. Look what my friend Aaron got me. I'm kind of a big deal on YouTube. Guys, we hit 30,000 subscribers. That is a big deal. Cheers. It's just water, but it's still good. See, it's good for us. We need to put good things in our bodies too, just like our dogs. Now listen, all right, so guys, we talked a little bit about this salt divider test. That's what we're going to take a look at now. I'm going to throw our first label up there. This one is, is a science diet pet food, okay? Now, I've underlined salt. Can you see it there? Now, remember, any ingredients following salt, salt is only makes up 1% of our pet food. So all of the other ingredients are 1% or less. So when you go down to the bottom there, guys, and you see... Uh, apples and broccoli and carrots and cranberries and green peas. You see that at the very bottom of the ingredients list? That means each one of them makes up less than 1%. So they're telling you that this stuff is in the bag, but it's like one pea is in the bag. Um, of one, Not even a whole slice of apple is in the bag. But they put it on there to fool us so that we think we're giving our dogs something good. We're not. There's nothing good here. Now, I also want to start, let's start at the beginning. The first ingredient is chicken meal. Chicken meal, not chicken, not human grade chicken, not boneless chicken, not boneless skinless chicken, it's chicken meal. That means that's a lot of byproducts. This is one of the top selling dog foods on the market, science diet. Putting in 
worse than kibbles and bits is what's in their food. And this is what our vets are recommending because they, they are in bed with these companies. And this bag of food is so darn expensive, guys. Oh my gosh. We're paying a lot of money to feed our dogs crap. It's, it's just bad. Now, the first three ingredients in pet food, we really need to see some type of meat, okay? Because the first, they're listed, all the ingredients are listed as the bulk of the ingredients. So the first listed ingredient says chicken meal makes up the majority of this dog food. The second largest amount of food, of of ingredient is the cracked pearled barley. But what you need to understand is this is before it's cooked, okay? So it's cooked down and baked down into a dusty, crispy, has nothing in it. And all the additives, the vitamin E, the vitamin A, the folic acid, do you see that down there, guys? It's less than 1%. That's hardly anything. Why'd you even put it in there? What a waste. Yeah, it's not doing them any good. So it's just all a mess. So we need to see the first three ingredients as some type of, of meat source because that's what our dogs are desi designed to have. That's where they get their protein. They don't get protein from the barley. They don't get protein from brewer's rice. They get carbohydrates from that. And as you can see, this pet food is made up of mostly carbohydrates, just like the rest of them. So you wanna know what I feel about this pet food? And I'm sure Rodney Abib can agree with me because I stole this off of one of his videos because it cracked me up. So let's see what Rodney thinks of this food, science diet. I couldn't agree more, my friend. I couldn't agree more. Piece of crap. It's trash. It's garbage. All right. Let me get back in here to the chat. We're going to take a look at our second label. All right, Pac-Man Bob, I see you got a question, buddy. I won't let you down, okay? Um, next label, Pro Plan. This is a label from um, Purina. All right, you see I've underlined salt. So we see where that is. Let me get some of this off here. Okay, so after salt, anything listed after salt makes up only 1% or less of the food. So we can see that our vitamin C source is down there. Our zinc, which is very important, our zinc source is way down there, less than 1%. Our vitamin A, our copper sulfate, all these are very important. Vitamin B12 supplement, huh, less than 1%. Garlic oil, folic acid, which helps brain health, less than 1%. Vitamin D, calcium, less than 1%. Oh my God, it's poopy, it's poopy. Okay, so the first ingredient, you with me guys, you looking? Chicken, chicken's the first ingredient. That's wonderful and I'm very happy about that. Just remember, now this is, this is Purina Pro Plan. That's the first ingredient before it's cooked. We know what happens to, to chicken when we cook it down. It, it loses about half its weight, right guys? At least 50%. So chicken, whole grain wheat is the second. That's like flour. That's like making a cake. Like I told you earlier guys, kibble's like making a cake. Um, poultry byproduct meal, that's a third ingredient. So that's, that's scrap food guys. That's feet, beaks, um, other organ meats that are wasted. They, they, there's nothing else they can do but render them down and, and grind them up and cook it down to nothing. Brewer's rice, corn gluten meal, barley. They, now we're reading all these carbohydrates. Oatmeal, beet pulp. That's a carbohydrate too, beet pulp. Um, dried egg product. And, and the list goes on, guys. It's just bam. You know what? We know what Rodney thinks of this one? I know what he thinks about it. That's what he thinks about it. And I couldn't agree more. All right. Now, guys, they're all, this is all kibble. We could sit here all night. Let's check out another one. I do have a couple decent ones to show you. We're going to pull one up right now. This is Origin. This is Origin dog food. This is the chicken flavor or the original, I think. No, it's the chicken. All right, so they don't actually list salt. They don't have salt. They use another form of preservative. 
which is usually their fish oil would be their preservative. So I highlighted that. So anything after that is minuscule, 1% or less, ground chicken bone. Well, they need bone. We know that, guys. Whole pumpkin, whole butternut squash, freeze-dried chicken liver, less than 1%. That's hardly anything. But let's, let's go on up to the start. They got deboned chicken. Well, first of all, we don't need to debone it. We, they need the bone. Grind it up. Grind it up in there and give it to them. They need it. But when it's cooked, no, they can't have it. It would make them sick. They'd choke on it, probably. Deboned turkey, flounder. So our first in the three ingredients are meat and a protein source. And I do like that. Whole eggs, which is another protein source. Mackerel, which is fish. Chicken liver, turkey liver, chicken heart, turkey heart. This is good, guys. This is what we want to see. But what we can't forget is this is cooked down to nothing. It's one thing if we had all these ingredients in the bowl, fresh, whole, either cooked or raw. This would be a fantastic label but it's cooked and it's rendered down. So all the moisture is cooked out of this, guys. It's down to like 2% moisture or something when it's done. There's no moisture in this. Our dogs need a moisture-rich diet. They're not getting it from kibble. So I, I just know what Rodney would say about this. I just know it. Yeah, I know. I'm with you, buddy. I'm with you. I couldn't agree more. All right. I'm going to show you one more label, and I'm going to let you know that if you had to feed kibble, and you just had to, I don't know why you would have to. I think I'd rather go out and let my dog graze on grass. They'd probably get more nutrients. But I would say the carnivore label, we're going to take a look at that. I think you guys are going to be impressed with this as kibble feeders. But i got to tell you, it's expensive. It's really expensive. Up at the top is the only listed ingredients. So you see that, guys. We have fresh chicken, we have chicken liver, and we have eggs. So we have our two protein sources. Eggs are a source of protein, but they're not meat. Then we go right into the carbohydrates, the barley, the salmon, the sweet potato, the brown rice. Those are our car all carbohydrates. Sprouted peas, corn, potato starch, apples, carrots, then sea salt and kelp. So there's a tiny bit of kelp in there, but look what's listed after sea salt and kelp. Nothing else. They have been fully transparent with, their, with what they put into the, to their food, if they're telling the truth, and I'm impressed by that. This is Carne 4, which is spelled C-A-R-N-A, and the number 4. Carnivore, Carna 4, Carna 4. Anyway, it's probably, in my opinion, the best kibble, and... I think that we can, if we had to feed kibble, I think I would do that. But I want to tell you guys, it's expensive. You, you know, if you're cooking for your dog, you'd probably do better. You'd probably do better. I mean, I have a recipe in the, let me see if it's in here. I'm pretty sure it is. I have a recipe in the description of this video of, of an easy way to cook for your dog and give them what they need. It, you can do it. Search Rodney Habib's website, guys, on YouTube. Plus, he has a Facebook page, and I forget what it's called. Somebody knows. Somebody type it in there for me. Um, anyway, he has raw diets. People have been emailing me and asking me a lot. Hey, Reggie Neely. That's my friend from the campground. People have been asking me a lot Um what I feed my dogs, what's the recipe, can I make a video, how do I make my food, and if you guys want, I will give you that next week to end this, this uh, series on grooming our dog's health with food, but I don't think a lot of you are, are as interested in the raw food as, as I think you outweigh each other, not many of you are interested in that, if you are, let me know, give me a thumbs up in the chat, if you do want our live stream next week to be my recipe and me putting together how I prepare their food, where I get it, what it costs, and how much I feed them, how I figure all that out. If that's what you want me to do next week, guys, give me a thumbs up. If not, give me a thumbs down because I need to know. You can also leave it in a comment after the this is on replay, okay, guys? 
But it's so interesting um, to learn about kibble and to learn how, you know, Marlo wants it okay, to learn how we really are kind of fooled because we're trusting our, our pet professionals to tell us, our vets, what, what was best to feed our dogs and why. But really what they're telling us to feed them is causing problems. It's causing bad things aside from skin problems well i do have people interested all right you guys keep it coming let's see i'm getting all thumbs up here um wow let me go back and answer a few questions and we're going to get chatty about a few more things i saw pac-man bob sent me an email today i'm going to answer his question live because it might help others and he had been where is that pac-man bob he's my buddy says amy old buddy old pal my huckleberry that's me where can I find an eight inch thinner for my golden retrievers? Try it everywhere. Kenchi, Dave and Busters, etc. It sounds like nobody's nobody's got them in. So you're saying that Kenchi is completely sold out of decent eight inch thinners? Is you they have seven inch, seven and a half inch too. The Scorpion line. Um, I really like that one. That's a good one. The Scorpion line, which they make a good thinner. And it's affordable. The Love series makes it a decent thinner, absolutely. Um, if, if you can't, so what I would do, I was going to tell you this in an email, and I think I got too busy. What I would do is I would call Kenshi and tell him what you're looking for. You say, I'm a novice groomer, but I groom my dogs at home. I'm Pac-Man Bob. I know what I'm doing. And say, I need a thinning shear. You know, just to trim the furnishings, you know, one that's going to be somewhat aggressive and take a good bit of coat, but easy to blend and let them walk you through. They know their shears inside and out. They know more about their shears than I do. I know the ones that I love, but I don't have every shear made by Kenji. So I would say, call them, call them, go to the website, get their number and call them and talk to them and say, this is what I need, or you can email them too. They have a contact page on their website. And this is what I need. Steer me in the right direction. This is my price range. Let them help you. That's what I would do, Pac-Man Bob. And if they have nothing, which, boy, that would be terrible if they don't have anything to offer you. If they don't, go to Jody Murphy's website. Jody with an I, J-O-D-I, Jody Murphy. She has that wonderful outliner shear that I love. It's not an eight inch shear though, but it's an aggressive one. Um, also, Elsie, Elsie Wong, who's in our chat. If you're in our Facebook group, Pac-Man Bob, she knows a lot about shears. She is like a, a, a occupational therapist. Um, you know, she works with that kind of stuff. But anyway, she knows a lot about shears. She can help you and she's wonderful. Everybody loves Elsie. She's so much help. All right, so hopefully that helps you, my friend. If not, um, I'll, I'll keep doing a little digging. If I can figure something out or find something, I will certainly send you an email. So I won't forget about you. Jamie says, what about nature's recipe puppy dog food for Sadie? That's what she's on for now. Uh, like I said, Jamie, I showed you tonight how to read your labels. Now you be the judge. I'm not going to tell you guys what to feed your dogs. I'm not, you know, I, that's not my area of expertise. I have thrown myself into a lot of research for my own dog's benefit and for your dog's benefit, but I am not going to tell you what to feed your dogs. Um, that's up to you. You have to do the research. I had to do the research and, and I'm still learning and trying to per perfect my dog's raw diet. It's a lot of work. But now that I have the grinder, it's just going so well because I can mix everything together and, and they don't bat an eye. They love it. They're still finishing up on Ollie Pet Food. Did you guys see my Ollie Pet Food demo that I, my review I put out, my video, just a couple days ago? I want you to watch that. That's a great alternative to not feeding raw and not cooking for your own dog. Ollie Food is cooked. It's not raw. It's lightly cooked. But it's, it's a good product. My dogs are still eating it. They've been eating it now for three whole weeks straight. And things are going very well. And I did not transition them. I went right from raw to Ollie. So that told me something right there, that their stomach was already in good shape because of the raw food. And Ollie must be pretty good quality. It did not affect them. Had I given them some kibble, I would have seen some diarrhea. 
because that is hard for them to adjust to, especially when they're not used to eating it anymore. So, um, yeah, guys, I'm not going to tell you what to do, honey, Jamie. You have to make up your decision. You are a good pet owner, and you can figure this out. Colleen says, puppy food, eight weeks old. I don't get help except Dr. Harvey's uh, puppy food. Yeah, um, well, I think I would go with canned food. Canned food rates, good quality canned food rates better than kibble. So maybe think about that, Colleen, looking into a good quality canned food or Ollie pet food. You know, Ollie asked you the age of your dog, if it's a puppy, if it's what breed it is, your activity levels, any allergies, everything. They, that's all on the website. It's all in that demo that I did the other day, guys. I walk you through and show you exactly how to do it. So go check it out and Take advantage of 50% off of your first box, whether that's two weeks or a month, however much you choose to order, because you may find that that's the solution. And you also may find that just adding, going with feeding 20%, 25% Ollie, and still feeding a good kibble is better than nothing, guys. Some whole food, some fresh food is better than no fresh food. It's like eating McDonald's breakfast, lunch, and dinner or eating McDonald's only for lunch and eating cooked meals for breakfast and dinner. You know, that's better than eating all McDonald's, isn't it? I'm trying to explain it to you guys that way because it's the truth. Um, it looks like you guys are interested in seeing how that raw diet goes. I didn't get one single thumbs down. So I will listen to you and we will talk about that. Um, maybe if I have time, I can even put together a nice cooked recipe which I do have one in the description of this video guys so or it might be raw I think it's raw with burger I don't know I can't remember I got all thrown off because my stream key got messed up I have to fix that all right so um I want to feed my dog raw food or slightly cooked Diane I think it's the way to go honey honestly um Ashley says I just started one of mine on Stella's and Chewy's I, uh, they, the video I linked that Rodney Habib did about kibble, that dog food is one that he reviewed and he went over the labels and what's in it. And this is what he had to say about it. I'm not, I'm not kidding. I mean, he didn't like it at all. So <laughs> I hate to be the person to say this, but I love you guys way too much to, to, to tell you what you want to hear. I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm just going to give it out there to you. But you guys have to make your own decisions. Janelle says, can all four of my dogs eat raw? Of course they can, honey. Absolutely. And there's all these uh, concerns about, you know, like uh, professionals, vets will say, oh, don't feed them raw. You know, it's very dangerous to you and to your dog, you know, because of salmonella. But I want to tell you that there have been more reported documentation reports of dog food kibble containing salmonella and testing for salmonella and killing dogs, kibble, salmonella, bacteria, than raw food. It's just to keep you guys buying that nasty crap. It is. Sorry, it's upset. Janelle says, how much was your food grinder, please? Okay, and next week when I do this, I'm going to show you my food grinder. And I'm also, and I showed that in my Ollie video that I did release on Saturday, guys. So go watch that if you didn't watch it. I think most of you did. But my food grinder, I think I have to go back and look. I thought it was 700, but I think it was 600. And that included shipping. And it is heavy. It really is very heavy, but it's scary. Um, I think it would grind anything, but it grinds through chicken and bone like nothing. And and I wouldn't, you know, put like a beef femur in there. That I wouldn't do. I mean, it probably would grind it, but I'm not going to do that. You know, you can do beef ribs uncooked. Absolutely. Everything that goes in there is uncooked. Never cook it. If there's any rib in your dog's diet, it cannot be cooked. If there's any bone in your dog's diet, it cannot be cooked. That you know, They could choke on it. It could, it could perforate their intestines. It would just be very, very bad. Okay, so hopefully that answered that for you, Janelle, okay? 
Um, Denise says, what do you think about blue, blue buffalo dog food? My dog only eats wet food, not dry. He's nine years old. I think the blue buffalo canned food is much better, Denise, honestly. Um, but read the label. The labels are there. We talked about it tonight. What you need to look for. You need to look for a lot of protein sources right up front. You don't want to see, you know, your rice and your carbohydrates as the first or second ingredients because that's the bulk of the food. Dogs weren't designed to eat those carbohydrates. What in the world is going on? Prinny, you did it again. You are such a godsend. Thank you, Amy. Oh, honey. It's my pleasure to share these secrets with you guys and do this research for you and our pets. My pets, your pets, I love you, I love them, and we're better together. That's what we're doing. Thank you. I appreciate that. Pretty, that's the third week in a row you super chatted me. You are one crazy girl, but I appreciate it. I really do. And I know you guys are, are listening, and yet you just have to make decisions. It's not easy. It wasn't easy for me either. And I still make decisions in feeding my dogs. And I still get scared about feeding them. Am I doing right by them? We just never know, do we? Let me get back up here to your questions. I see where I left off here. There's Denise's, I got hers. Now, Cynthia. Cynthia says, are you still using supporting Ollie's? I ordered my first package tailored to my dog's type. I got the 50% discount. I will have my order on the 26th, which is Wednesday. That's awesome. Listen, I absolutely am supporting them, Cynthia. I, I signed up to be an affiliate with them so that I can recommend it to you guys. I would recommend Ollie over any kibble or any canned food. I would not choose to feed my dogs raw over Ollie unless I couldn't do raw. I would feed them Ollie. I swear to you I would. If... If I couldn't feed raw, I would probably go with Ollie versus me cooking for my dogs. I would be afraid if I was cooking for my dogs that I may not get it right. Because when you cook for them, you change everything. You, you change the moisture level. You change the, the nutrients because you're cooking. So I would be afraid to cook for my dogs. But some people do it and they do it well. And there's Facebook groups out there that, that help you, guide you, just like our Facebook group. That's about grooming your pets at home. There's groups out there on Facebook that'll help you with cooking for your pet. There's raw feeding groups too. And there's of course a lot of good YouTube channels that will, will walk you through all of that stuff. So you guys just gotta go find it. You know, it's out there for you. Uh, thanks Raquel. Raquel said the Ollie food video was very good. It, it, I Thank you, I really put a lot into it. And I was trying to be very transparent with you guys and saying what I felt about the food, but would I switch them from raw? I wouldn't. I'm very invested in the raw feeding and I feel very confident about my recipe right now with these dogs. And, and, I, and I really think I got a good thing going on with it and I don't want to quit it. But I am feeding them still the Ollie. They're going to be on that for at least two more weeks. And they love it. They scarf it up. Just like they do when I feed them raw. They eat very quickly when I feed them raw. They love it. And they also love the Ollie food. So I'm very, very happy about that. And, um, oh my goodness. Jenna Whittington, another super chat? Oh, what did you do? Thank you, honey. I appreciate you. You know I do. What did you say? You said... Thanks so much, Amy, for the great info. We have had another grooming session with my son's dog. Plus, this food info has really helped me decide to make the change. Thanks, cuz. You're welcome, cousin. That's my long-lost cousin. Yeah, absolutely. It's my pleasure, and it's scary. I know. I appreciate your super chat, Janet. Thank you very much. But it, it, it is scary, but just... Don't stop learning, guys, when it comes to their diet and their needs. You hear me say all the time, biologically appropriate, species appropriate, um, moisture-rich diet. Those are what our dogs need. They have a biologically appropriate diet that they're biologically designed to, to process. And study that. The information's there for us, guys. 
Janelle says, oh, did I miss somebody? Dory, hold on. I'm sorry. Let me scroll up a little. I got all beside myself when Jenna super chatted me. Uh, okay, Karen has a question. Marlo, okay, let me go. Let me go up here. Marlo says, might be stupid question, but sharing with friends, they brought up the bacteria in the grinder, but I would think it could be taken apart and cleaned correctly. Absolutely. And my husband, I don't know if he's in the chat yet, but he helped me clean it afterwards. It's not a big deal at all. The actual motor part of the grinder is completely encompassed and it's all stainless steel. So the only thing I have to do with the motor, which doesn't touch anything, but, but it turns the grinder, it never, the motor part never touches the raw meat. The only thing that does is the attachment that all comes apart. The auger bit comes out, the attachment, that all, and it's heavy. That all comes out. We wash it right in the sink with hot water and soap, and it's good. Guys, and don't be so scared about all this bacteria. That's what people want you to feel about raw feeding. I have been feeding Big Gus raw food for two years almost, and I didn't have a grinder until about, what, a month ago? I was chopping all that meat all that time, all the time. And then little Gus came along. He's three years old. We got him the end of May. Been doing the same for him. Now it's double time. So until I got that grinder, I was like, wow, this is crazy. And it's a lot of work. So the grinder is it's a man, It's just like, you know, the meat grinders in your stores. Well, they make burger. You know, they throw it in a hot stainless steel tub, which is what I do here. And 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 wash it with soapy water you know you know hot soapy water it's a disinfectant oh my gosh prima bathing systems here i think that's high hello my darling oh i love our prima bathing system family I miss you guys all right so let's get some questions going here i see there's a few more marlo i hope that helped you i know everybody's a little worried about you know the bacteria the salmonella and all that but that's just what they want us to fear i can tell you karen says i'm in ireland my local butchers give me organ meats which is good like kidneys hearts etc for free often they won't because i have no use for it you know obviously nobody wants to eat that dogs love it though he says he throws them out anyways doesn't sell them to the public because really nobody's going to want it. I mean, you will find beef liver in, in, the cat, in your meat section, you know. Um, possibly like chicken livers and chicken hearts and gizzards. People do cook those and make gravy out of them. Other than that, you're right. All the organ meat comes out. They, they don't have a use for it. And they would honestly give it away to you. So that, that's an easy source. There's a fly in here. That's an easy way to source in that that organ meat into your dog's food. But remember, it's only a portion of the meat needs to be organ meat. The majority of the meat is the, the protein source, just the meat, you know? Um, all right, so, oh, is Alex in here? Go Groomer Husby, ah, I gotta read this. As Amy's husband, I'm very worried about this grinder and my well-being in the household. If I'm ever missing, you know what to do. That would never happen, honey. I can't live without you. Knock it off. All right. Uh, let's see. I, got, I see a question there from Tiffany. She says, what are your thoughts on dehydrated raw whole chicken wings? Necks and feets to give to your dogs. Is it safe since it's not cooked? Um, dehydrated. If it's dehydrated, I would think the bones in it would be brittle. So I'm... I would say as long as it's not got the bone in it, it's good. But just remember, dehydrated means it's pulling the moisture out. How are you going to get the moisture back into their meal? Like, what are you going to be feeding them to give them moisture-rich meal? Because they need a moisture-dense diet, like 70% moisture in their diet at least. That's what they need. You know they're not getting near that out of kibble. I, I, I think it might be, geez, 5% moisture. I mean, it's, it's just so tiny. They, they live in a constant chronic state of dehydration when they eat kibble. That just, that just really gets me, guys. It gets to me. It gets me. And it's so sad to think about it that way, but it's the truth. They live in a constant state of slight dehydration, starving their organs, 
their muscles, uh, their brain, everything can have a lot to do with behavioral issues. Diet can. I mean, it can really affect a lot of things. And I don't want to stay on the subject too long because I think I'm going to scare all you guys away. And we'll get back to the, the health of grooming our dogs and the importance of all that. But here's the thing. We can't, we can't just fix everything with brushing, bathing, and, and um, de-shedding techniques and trimming and shampoos and conditioners. We can help a lot of things along the way, but oftentimes, and that's why I did this series, it's coming from the skin out. You know, it's coming from inside in. And it didn't happen overnight that this skin allergy surfaced, that the ear infection surfaced, that the fungal infection on your dog's skin surfaced. This could take years to develop until their system finally is just getting a little bit tired as they're aging and these things have the power then to surface because the dog's system isn't kicking as much as it used to because they're aging or whatever, you know. So um, Dory says, hi Amy, so many doggos have seasonal allergies Good question, yes. Could you please address foods that help ease environmental tree, grass, hay allergies? Cooper sneezes and gets itchy eyes. There isn't a, there isn't a food that's going to fix it, so to speak, Dory. It's just like us. We eat whole food. We still get allergies. There are elements out there that are at times going to get to us. Same with our dogs. There are things seasonal out there that are just going to get to them. You see sneezing, weepy eyes, even causing uh, overproduction of buildup in the ears. And, you know, it, that's all allergy related. So you really can't, like, fix everything with food. But you can give your dog a healthy, good system to fight these allergies off by feeding them consistently a good diet. So that's, you know, and they're still going to, suffer at times some of them will some of them won't with seasonal allergies some of them just have a very strong system they have a very healthy system and they have good genetics and it's just not going to get to them you know janelle says i've tried to order ollie from your link and it only took ringo it did not let me enter my other dogs so i didn't do it all right well i don't know if uh, you want to try it again? I'm not sure, Janelle. It should. It asks you if you want to add another pet. Um, you might want to do them separately, but the website seems to be really set up nicely because I did go through and have to fill it out for both my dogs. You know, go through the same stuff you guys are going through that I put in the demo. So it should, honey. I'm not sure what, what went wrong, but I would love to hear your feedback if you do try it. I know a couple of you did. Marlo, I think you did too. Um, I saw s several of you did try the trial 50% off of Ollie, and I'm very excited to hear feedback, okay? Um, Jamie says, I gave Sadie a summer cut again. Her hair grows so fast. I did her top knot and failed, but she still looked cute as a button, but did I, but I did do wrong. <laughs> We all make mistakes, honey. It'll grow back. Don't you worry about that. Um, is there any other questions here? Karen says, is it Karen? Okay. Karen, I got you. It says, maybe the butchers could grind the meat for us. That's an interesting question. I did um, a series on raw feeding a little more than a year ago, and I called the butchers near me because I know that they have to have a grinder similar to mine. Um, of course, they don't understand why would you want me to grind bone and your chicken all together with the skin why did you want me to grind that people don't eat that I'm like it's for my dog it's what my dog eats he needs it ground up well I would think that'll be bad for my grinder they don't know because they don't care about making dog food I mean I could I told Alex and mom we were down here grinding that it's oh my gosh it's 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 actually entertaining to do this but I said, Jesus, think of all the food that I could be making for dogs. But then I have to, you know, I'll have, if, if a dog d ends up getting sick, it'll be my fault, you know. Or if he ends up getting a, some type of health issue, it would be my fault, you know. Of course it would. Let's always try to blame something that we don't know enough about. So I, I just won't do it. But I would do it for close friends. That's about it. Um, so, yeah, 
you can ask Karen, and maybe your butchers around you are not quite as conservative as mine. They think they're going to break their machinery. I'm like, <laughs> So when I finally bit the bullet and bought that grinder, it made me laugh. I, I think I was telling Alex, I'm like, you know, what wouldn't this grind? I mean, it just, it, it almost speeds up when you put something in it. Instead of, you know, bogs down, it, it speeds up. It's, it's like a V10 or something, you know, like a V10 motor. It's insane. Pina, how you doing? Pina says, how would you keep their teeth clean? Well, that's the thing about, I'm glad you brought up teeth too. That's another thing about raw feeding and cooking for your dog is you don't have all those starches and sugars like kibble and canned food do that are really loaded with sugars and carbohydrates. That breaks down to sugar. And that's why our dogs that eat kibble have such buildup with tartar by the time they're certain ages unless they are really good bone chewers. You know, a nice hard big bone that they can't choke on. That's a good thing. If your dog likes to chew on them, it's really good for the teeth. But honestly, it's because of the sugars that are in pet food. And please go watch the video that's linked in the description below. The sugars that are in pet food. Watch that video. And you'll, you'll have the answers you need. 50% sugar in the food, of course it's going to rot their teeth. That's what's rotting their teeth. When they're eating a raw food or cooked food, they don't get all those sugars. So the teeth definitely display better health, and which in the long run is better for their heart and their organs and their, their overall health that they don't suffer from teeth and gum disease. Um, so let's see here. Dory says, my hubby takes a teaspoon of local honey and it has helped him tremendously. Is it safe to give a doggo honey? I'm not sure you'd have to look, look into that. Um, honey is a natural sweetener. I don't know why you would need to give them honey though. And honestly, I mean, other than like other supplements that I put in my dog's food is a, is a tablespoon of a mixture of black pepper, turmeric, and cinnamon, which is an anti-inflammatory. It's good for digestion. It's good for brain health. It's, it's good for cancer fighting. The turmeric is amazing. So that's a supplement that I always put on their food, everything they eat. I even put it on the Ollie food because I want to make sure they're getting it. It's very important. Marlo says, I'm beside myself with Teddy. He does not like Ollie. I thought he, you just ordered it the other day. He goes to his dish, smells it, and walks away. Was it okay that I added organic pumpkin and low-sodium chicken broth? Yeah, if you had to add that to get him to eat it, Marlo. Yeah. I guess, but I'm so surprised that he won't eat it. I'm afraid, is Teddy getting snacks and treats? Because a dog that is not a real piggy eater, but if you're feeding them treats, they're going to turn their nose up at dinner. They'd rather just have the junk food. I mean, if a toddler, you ask him, would you rather have broccoli or a cookie? If you're giving them the choice, they're going to say cookie because they don't care about their health. Neither does a dog. It's our job to care about their health. So cut out treats. Guys, I don't give my dogs treats. I've told you this. It's not necessary because I want them to eat their meals because I've prepared good meals for them. I, we, we spend a lot of money on our dog's meals. I want them eating that, not junk food. So I wouldn't give your dog treats. They don't need it. If you feel that you're training and you need something with training, just cook a little bit of chicken and pull it apart and put it in a bag. It'll keep in the refrigerator for a couple of days and, and just a pinch of that, a little piece. That's a treat and it's good for them. All right, so Dory says for allergy relief. For allergy relief, um, you know, there's obviously some good shampoos that contain silicic acid, is it? Silicic acid and hydro, I mean, I'm sorry, chlor, chlorhexidine. Those are the types of shampoos that heal skin infections on your dogs. Um, other than that, allergy relief, uh, you know, wiping their paws down because they're, something outside's bugging them or whatever, that's something you might want to look into, um, and just a good diet. But they're going to suffer from allergies like we do different times. Um, especially as they age, they will. And yes, they are. They're just like our kids. I mean, yeah, our dogs are. If, if we said, hey, would you like broccoli or would you like a cookie? The dog's going to say, I'll take the cookie, please. <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> so yeah, busted giving treats. There you go, Marlo. So slow down on that. Cut it out. It's not, if, if you read, I'm showing you how to read your labels tonight, guys. It's the same thing with dog treats. Same thing. Boom. Get it out of here. No way. We don't want that. It's junky. It's junky. Read your dog food. Read your dog treat labels. You won't be very impressed either. Um, for, for Rolex, for Rolex says my dog's treat is primal goat's milk. Hey, good for you. That sounds great. It's good for and the probiotics. Absolutely. That's right. So you got to do your homework and find out something that's better. You know? All right, guys. You wanted it next week. You're getting it. We're going to go raw. We're going to talk raw. In fact, I would love to have my husband join me because he helped me with the preparing the food. So did my mom, but she would be too shy to come on here live. So I'm going to see if Hubby Go Groomer, guys, give him a thumbs up if you want him to join us in the live stream next week so we can all talk about raw feeding and what it's like and I'll have lots of footage to share with you, lots of information. I'll link my grinder. I'll link my, um, say it, Amy, uh, vacuum sealer, which is how I, you know, keep it so that I can, it's condensed enough to store in my fridge, in my freezer, you know, because I just, I just have our freezer, not a separate one. So, um, all right, so we will definitely go there, and if you guys have any other questions, throw a comment in after this is live, or send me an email. It's, I, I really prefer you guys, to, if it's just a simple question, to throw it in a comment after the video is live, because that way then everybody can benefit from the answer, instead of me taking the time to answer an email at a time, because I get a lot of emails, and it's very hard for me to answer all of them, because I wouldn't get anything else done. So please do respond in the, in the comment section, guys, so that everybody can read them and learn from them. All right? I love you guys. Thank you for joining me tonight live from the grooming table. It's good to be back in my salon with you guys. That's where we belong. I will see you next Monday. I hope you have a wonderful week. I uh, will try to get a video out for you this week. We'll see. I have to make sure I fix this live stream. This stuff's driving me nuts. i got to get it fixed. All right, guys, here's a subscriber showdown for you. You have a good week and you take care. I'll see you next Monday. Love you.